Algebra 2 course lesson 4 solving linear equations. We need to first ask ourselves why are we doing this? Why solve equations? We'll take a look at our first graphic in this lesson, the graph of a business situation. This business makes hats. The business cost is given by the equation y equals 10x plus 1000. This number in the equation, 1000, represents $1000, the fixed cost or beginning cost the business must pay before manufacturing any hats. A fixed cost will be a one-time cost before manufacture, maybe like the cost of designing the hat, buying specialized equipment to produce the hats, etc. Graphically, this cost is represented by a number on the y-axis. In algebra vocabulary, we call this point of intersection at the y-axis the y-intercept. And this number, 10 for $10, is the variable cost for producing and selling each of the hats. These costs would include material and labor to make each hat. Now we'll take a look at this line in red. The equation is y equals 20x. The letter R represents revenue. In the equation y equals 20x, $20, $20 is the revenue received for each hat that is sold. And in this equation, the y-intercept is zero because the line goes through the point of origin, or zero comma zero. But what is really important, what we really want to know, is what volume of sales is needed, how many hats sold are needed for revenues to equal costs, where the business goes from losing money to making money. In solving equations, we have an opportunity to figure out things with real-world meaning. This is what we call the break-even point in business. We will solve this situation later in the lesson. We're going to look at solving equations. You already did this in Algebra 1, but we'll go over this quickly as a review. We'll start by looking at this equation, x plus 4 equals 10. You may say, this problem is so easy it's obvious what the answer is. Why are we even doing this problem? Well, maybe. But as we go forward with more complexity, we always fall back on the principles we're going over. So this is really a review of applying the principles of solving equations. It's important in this course to learn something many students do not understand, and that is the distinction between a variable and an unknown. In polynomials where there is not an equation, the letters are variables. For instance, this variable x is called a variable because it can be any real number. However, in an equation, the same letter will be an unknown. It's an unknown because it does not vary. In linear equations, there is one and only one value x can possibly be. It's an unknown because until we solve the equation, we don't know what that number is. This is a very important distinction because you don't want to waste your time trying to find the value of an expression when there is no equal sign. Now about solving for unknowns, we can do any operation. We can divide, subtract, square, take a square root, or any operation as long as we do the same to both sides of the equation. In order to find the value of x, we need to get it, the letter x, by itself. The operation we need to do is get rid of the 4. And we can do that by subtracting it. And we always follow the golden rule of algebra. What you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other side. So we subtract 4 from the other side of the equation as well. 4 minus 4 cancel on the left side. So we bring down what's left, x equals 6. Now we check our answer using the original equation. We plug in 6 for x. That becomes 6 plus 4 equals 10, which becomes 10 equals 10. Check. So we box in x equals 6 is our correct answer. You might say again, that was too easy. Maybe, but as we go forward with more complexity, we always fall back on this principle. We have different kinds of symbols and letters here. For a variable, we can use any symbol except a number. Let's solve this equation, 4x plus 8 equals 28. The goal, again, is to get x by itself. We'll start by subtracting 8 from both sides of the equation. 8 minus 8 cancel on the left side of the equation. We bring down what's left, 4x equals 20. Divide both sides of the equation by 4. 4 over 4 cancel on the left side. We bring down what's left, and that's x equals 5. 
So we'll check our work. Do you notice the distinction between solving an equation and simplifying a polynomial? In a polynomial, we have to make up a number in order to check our work, like we used 10 before. But in, a, in an equation, we use the number we calculated. We substitute the 5 back into the original equation. So that gives us 4 times 5 plus 8 equals 28. That simplifies to 28 equals 28. Check. And we box in our answer as correct, x equals 5. Now we'll add a level of complexity to the problem. We have 6x plus 8 equals 2x plus 28. We need to solve for x, but we have x's on both sides of the equal sign. We have 6x on the left side and 2x on the right side. What do we do? We can fix that situation by subtracting either the 6x or the 2x. I'll subtract 2x, so that way we'll be solving for the unknown on the left side and we'll be working with a positive number of x's. 2x minus 2x cancel on the right side. We bring down what's left, so we have 4x plus 8 equals 28. From here, it's the same problem we worked and checked earlier when we found that x equals 5. Now let's add another layer of complexity. We have 4x plus 8 plus 2x equals 11 plus 2x plus 17. We'll combine like terms. On the left side, we combine 4x and the 2x to make 6x. And on the right side, we have 11 plus 17 equals 28. Now we bring down what's left. We have 6x plus 8 equals 2x plus 28. Again, that should look familiar to you as that's where we started the previous problem. Now we'll look at a new problem. 2 times quantity 3x minus 5 plus 2 equals 4 times quantity 3 minus x. The first thing we'll do is employ the distributive property of algebra and that is signified by the green arcs drawn from outside parentheses to inside parentheses. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. We bring down the plus 2. 4 times 3 equals 12, and 4 times minus x is minus 4x. Note how in all this, the plus 2 remained unaffected. We didn't change it at all. Next, we can combine like terms on the left side, so uh, minus 10 plus 2 become minus 8. And then we bring down 8, 6x minus 8 equals 12 minus 4x. Next, we can get rid of the minus 4x on the right side by adding it to both sides of the equation. Negative 4x plus 4x cancel each other on the right side. We bring down 10x minus 8 equals 12. Add 8 to both sides of the equation. Negative 8 plus 8 are 0 and cancel each other on the left side. We bring down 10x equals 20. We divide both sides by 10. 10 divided by 10 cancel on the left side we have x equals 2. Check the work. We plug 2 for x back into the original equation and it's shown above on the right side. And since 4 equals 4, we are certain that x equals 2 and we box in x equals 2 as our correct answer. I would like to emphasize that in this equation, as in any linear equation, that there is only one solution or answer to this equation and that answer is 2. This is a rewind back to the start of the last problem. We could have started by dividing by 2 to simplify before going further. 2 over 2 cancel the two terms on the left side. Then we can bring down what's left and from here we could work to the solution which would be the same as in starting the other way we did earlier. There are multiple ways a lot of times to solve equations. Now going back to the graph we had at the beginning of the lesson, we're going to use the techniques just reviewed to find the answer to our earlier question. How many hats must the company sell before it starts to make a profit? To find that out there are different ways, but applying what we have done in the lesson, we put the two equations together because we know that at the break-even point, one equation's value of y will be the same as the other value of y in the other equation. So we have 20x equals 10x plus 1,000. We first subtract 10x from each side of the equation. On the right side, 10x minus 10x equals 0 and cancel. What we have left is 10x equals 1,000. Next, we divide both sides of the equation by 10. 10 divided by 10 on the left side equal 1 and cancel. 
And that gives us x equals 1000 divided by 10, which is 100. So this number, 100, is the answer to our question of how many hats must the company sell before it starts making a profit? Well, that answer is 100. And at 100 hats sold, both in revenue, both the revenue and cost are $2,000. So we can mark our coordinate on the graph as 100 comma 2,000. What we've gone over today is really a review of what you covered in Algebra 1. But it's an important part of this Algebra 2 course because this skill is very necessary for where we need to go as we move forward. Now we're going to work on an area of algebra that might not be familiar to you, and that's solving absolute value equations. Let's take a look at this thing here, the 8 bordered by the two vertical line segments. Is it the number 181? No. This is the number 8 surrounded by what are called absolute value bars, and I sometimes like to call them absolute value brackets. The concept of absolute value is that a number's absolute value is its distance from zero. We bring in a number line to help us conceptualize this principle. We see 8 over here to the right of the number line where the 8 is located, and we see that it's 8 units away from the number 0. So we say that the absolute value of 8 is 8. Is there another number with an absolute value of 8? Yes, this number on the number line, negative 8. We see that it's also 8 units from 0, only in another direction from 0. So we can say that the absolute value of negative 8 equals 8. 0 is an important number because it is not any distance from 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. What number has the same absolute value as 15? It's negative 15 because negative 15 is the same distance from 0 as 15. 15 is to the positive side of 0 and negative 15 is to the negative side of 0. When it comes to the absolute value, we don't care about the direction from 0, just its distance from 0. Now we'll look at this equation, the absolute value of x equals 5. If we go back to our number line, we could start at 0, then we could count 5 units to the right, then we could count 5 units to the left. So our answers to the equation are x equals negative 5 and x equals 5. And in set notation, we place the numbers inside brackets. The numbers inside the brackets, each one separated by a comma, are answers. But in algebra, do we have to go to a number line every time to figure this out? No, we don't. And that's where we're going next. To help solve absolute value equations, I like to think of two alternate universes. One universe is composed of matter, and the other one is the exact opposite because it's composed of antimatter. On the left side, or matter side of the equation, we take the variable outside the absolute value bars, and that gives us x equals 5. And on the right side, or alternate universe side, we have negative x equals 5. And to solve for x dividing by negative 1, x equals negative 5. So we end up with the same answers we found earlier by looking at the number line, which were x equals negative 5 and x equals 5. This brings us to a key point of this lesson. In absolute value equations, there can be two answers, and most of the time there will be two answers. Let's look at this equation. We have the absolute value of x equals negative 6. Can the absolute value of any number be negative? No, absolute values can only be positive. Anytime you isolate the expression in absolute value bars and have a negative number on the other side of the equation, you know that there is no solution. We've learned that absolute value equations can have two solutions or no solutions. They can also have just one solution. But don't be confused. Asking what is the absolute value of negative 8 or negative 6 is not the same as asking what number has an absolute value of negative 6. Let's look at this one, slightly more complex. We have the absolute value of quantity x minus 3 equals 9. We bring back our alternate universe. The universe of matter equation is x minus 3 equals 9. The alternate universe equation is x minus 3 equals negative 9. Here's the left equation solved by adding 3 to both sides of the equation. We end up with x equals 12. On the antimatter equation, we get x equals negative 6. 
And to check, we plug our answers back into the original equation. If we don't check using the original equation, we might have done something wrong since that first step that would make our check invalid. And it all checks out, so we box in our correct answers. And now this equation, 3 times the absolute value of quantity 2x minus 6 minus 8 equals 10. Before we can go to that alternate universe, we'll need to take care of everything except what's inside the absolute value bars. So we'll add 8 to both sides of the equation. Negative 8 plus 8 equals 0 and cancel each other. We bring down what's left. We divide both sides of the equation by 3. 3 divided by 3 canceled equal 1. We bring down what's left, the absolute value of quantity 2x minus 6 equals 6. From here we take the equation two different ways. On the left equation we have 2x minus 6 equals 6, and on the right equation we have 2x minus 6 equals negative 6. We add 6 to both sides of both equations. Cancel negative 6 plus 6 on the left side of both equations. Bring down what's left. We have 2x equals 12 on the left equation and 2x equals 0 on the right equation. For the left equation, we have x equals 12 divided by 2, which equals 6. And for the right equation, we have x equals 0. And in checking for both solutions, we have the check shown for x equals 6 back from the original equation. The box on top is the check for x equals 6. And the box on the bottom is the check for x equals 0. Check. Our solutions are x equals 0 and x equals 6. Let's look at this equation. 3 times the absolute value of quantity 2x plus 3 minus 9 equals 6. This would be a good problem, similar to the last equation that you can attempt to solve. Then play to see if you got the right answer. Here's the problem all worked out. Note the first step of simplifying by dividing all terms by 3. Here's all the checking of both negative 4 and 1. They both end up as 6 equals 6. So now we're certain that our answers are x equals negative 4 and x equals 1. Check. Let's take a review of what we have covered during this lesson. We went over the distinction between a variable and an unknown. A variable would be the letter in an algebraic expression such as this one, 3 times quantity 2x minus 5. It's a variable because it can vary and be any real number. But in an equation like this one, 3 times quantity 2x minus 5 equals 9, it's an unknown because in the equation x has a value, but we don't know what it is yet, so we call it an unknown instead of a variable. And after we work it out, 4 is the only number that we can use to replace x and make this equation a true statement. This is an important concept because if you know this, you will be able to decide what to do or try to do whenever you see an algebraic expression or an equation. As part of our review, we'll solve this equation, 3 times quantity 2x minus 5 equals 9. Here's the problem all worked out. The key is to do the opposite to get rid of the term. To move out the negative 2x, we need to add 2x to both sides of the equation. And we can get rid of this plus 9 by subtracting 9 from both sides of the equation. Now we'll get back to the polynomial arithmetic a little. What do we do to simplify this expression 4x plus 2 minus 6x minus 1? The 4x minus 6x become negative 2x and 2 minus 1 is 1. In solving absolute value equations, the first thing we do is isolate the absolute value portion inside absolute value bars. And when we have the expression inside absolute value bars isolated, we separate into two equations. One would be 2x minus 6 equals 6, and the other 2x minus 6 equals negative 6. Then we take it from there, and we will have two solutions. And we learn that there may be no solutions to an absolute value equation. It's impossible to have anything be a negative distance from 0. So when we isolate the absolute value expression and it's negative, we know that there is no solution. As I've mentioned before, look for problems in your textbook on solving linear equations and absolute value equations. Use your teacher or other sources to help you. And rewind and review any concepts or techniques you don't understand. Our next lesson, Lesson 5, Solving Inequalities. This has been Algebra 2 Course Lesson 4, Solving Linear Equations. Thanks for viewing.